Hey everyone, it's the 4Gun Guy, and today I'm going to do a pretty darn short video on triggers. Now, <clears throat> the two competition rifles that I shoot, this is my 6mm uh, BRA, and then I've got my Voodoo V22, and I've had uh, Trigger Tech Diamond triggers in both of these for a few years now. Uh, love Trigger Tech, love the Diamond trigger but it was time to make some changes so I decided to go with uh, one of the recommendations from again my buddy Jeff famous Jeff uh, who had uh, installed Bix and Andy triggers in his rifles uh, really loved them uh, had some features in there that were that were really nice and it's just a it's a different design it's a different trigger design uh, and it seems to work really well, but there's one thing. So there's a couple things I wanted to talk about today. Number one, uh, just, just the crispness of these triggers and the difference in this between a Bix and Andy and say a trigger tech. I'm going to show you those very up close. And along those lines, I'm going to show you something that can bite you if you don't tune these Bix and Andy triggers correctly. So we'll get into a little storytelling. We're gonna talk about what just happened to be at a match this past Saturday, why it happened, and then you know what you're gonna to need to do if you find yourself in that situation, how you remedy it. So if you're ready to go, let's get to it. Well, let's start with the Bix and Andy trigger itself, just talking about it. Really, really nice triggers. Uh, they're smooth, they're crisp, they have a sear adjustment on them. So you're, you're making two adjustments when you're, when you're tuning these triggers to your liking. <clears throat> the instructions, pretty straightforward if you just pay attention to them. <laughs> and uh, I had paid attention to them. Uh, I actually purchased these triggers from a friend of mine who does really good uh, uh, gunsmithing. Uh, his name's Brandon. And, uh, you know, he's a dealer for these triggers, so he got them for me. <clears throat> he was kind enough to install the straight shoe. So let's talk about shoes for a second. This trigger comes with four shoe options. You have the, the regular shoe that comes with it which is pretty narrow, actually. Uh, it, it's a narrow shoe. I've been used to a vertical, a 90 degree shoe, right? So you've got a 90 degree trigger shoe here. And again, well, I'll just put the picture up here. You'll see it here in a second. There's 90 degrees. <clears throat> There's a, a, a little larger rounded shoe. And then there's what they call the gator grip. Now, I had installed the straight shoe, or Brandon had for me, working very nicely. And then I ordered the Gator Grip because I felt it on someone else's rifle at a match about a month ago, and I really liked it. It's a wider shoe, and it's got this stippling on it that's very tactile, and I really, really liked how it felt. So I installed that myself. Uh, these triggers are tricky when you take them apart. You've got to be very careful. And I'm not going to show you that. There are videos out there. In fact, the manufacturers themselves have really good videos on how to take them apart. Uh, one thing I'm going to say about Bix and Andy, and this was something that Brandon did bring up, <clears throat> they're constantly updating their triggers. So for example, in the video I watched of the gentleman taking the trigger apart and making adjustments, there were two parts in, in mind that were not in that video. So when I took it apart, a little ball bearing and a little spring came out and I had to do a little research to make sure that they went back where I thought they should go back in the housing. No big deal, 
uh, it's, it was a good learning experience and now I know exactly where things go. Uh, but <clears throat> with that said, I changed the shoe and when I changed the shoe, that changed the sear setting. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. First, let's go ahead and zoom in on this thing. I want to show you the crispness of it and the break of it and talk about a little difference between this and say a Trigger Tech Diamond. So let's go ahead and do that. The gun, the rifle is unloaded. I have my, uh, my uh, Magwell uh, safety device in here, but I am gonna have to take this out when we uh, do, the, uh, do the trigger test. Okay, I think this is gonna be clear, so let, let's try this. Uh, let's run the bolt. Right? It is unloaded. There's nothing in the chamber, trust me. Now, I want you to pay attention to the pull here. Now, you can do a couple things. I can come out to the joint in my finger. I'm generally used to coming out on the tip of my finger, though, right about here. Now, watch the trigger after I pull it, after it breaks. Watch. Do you see how much travel there is after the break. That's just the way the Bix and Andy trigger works. Okay. In the trigger tech trigger, uh, and I wish I had one installed, but I don't. After that break, there's nothing. The trigger breaks and it stops. So you just have to get used to that. That's all it is. But watch the crispness here and watch that there is no travel up to the break. Right? There was no travel there. That was after the break. It's a very crisp trigger. Let's come down here. Okay. This trigger is set to about eight ounces, which some people may say, oh my gosh, what are you running an eight ounce trigger for? Guys in competition, <clears throat> some of these guys are running three to five ounce triggers. Eight ounces to me is fine. It feels good. I can't, you know, if I come in here and just do this, you know, it's not, it's not firing. It's not engaging. I have to, I have to be very, very uh, committed to the break. Okay. So I just wanted to talk about that and show that to you that there is that over travel after the break. So if you're looking at one of these triggers, it, it literally takes about 15 minutes for you to get used to that. That's it. Now guys, I am not going to show you how to adjust this trigger. Uh, the instructions are very clear and you just need to follow them. There's a sear adjustment and here's what happened the other day at a match. Pretend that I have run the bolt forward and I'm ready to fire. Uh, I was missing a lot of shots. And one of my really good buddies, uh, his name is Takashi, he actually won that match or tied for first, which was awesome. He got right next to me. In fact, he was looking at me pulling the trigger about the way this camera is looking at it right now. And I got down into position on a stage. Luckily, it was a bench kind of a bench shooting off a bench and he started to watch me shoot and all of a sudden he was yelling at me not yelling at me but he was telling me on one shot he would say you slapped it you slapped it you slapped it okay and then I'd I'd lighten up and I'd break a clean shot and he'd say good shot good shot good shot what happened afterwards he looked at it and the trigger was literally when, I, when, when the bolt was closed, the trigger was like this. I had about an eighth of an inch take up before the trigger broke. And he looked at it and he said, why are you running a two stage trigger? I said, I'm not running a two stage trigger. I'm running a single stage. He said, no, that, that's two stage. I racked the, the uh, bolt. I pulled back on it. Click. Couple other guys, in fact, some of the two of the top shooters in the match, 
and in the region came down. I said, guys, look at the trigger. Tell me what you think. They all racked around. Same thing. Eighth of an inch travel, click. Eighth of an inch travel, click. And they all said, you're running a two-stage trigger. It didn't hit me until I was driving home that I wasn't running a two-stage trigger. I had changed this shoe, and apparently, when you change the shoe, you have to adjust the sear, and I hadn't done that. That's why I was having so much take up on that trigger before the shop broke. Because look, this is, this is what it was. And when I adjusted the sear, none or very little. So you've got to be careful of that. If you want a lot of take up to treat this like a two stage trigger, you can certainly do that. In fact, one of the gentlemen, the gentleman that sold these to me, Brandon, we were at the, I was at the range yesterday and he helped ensure that I had the right uh, uh, trigger, uh, the sear set properly. And even he got down on my rifle and he went, you know, you're, you're running right there, you know, at the, at pretty much where you want to be. And he said, I even have a little take up in mine. He said, I don't run the sear as close as the instructions tell you to or, or say you can. He says, I have probably a 32nd of an inch <clears throat> take up in, in, in his trigger. That's what he was saying. So my, my whole point here is to just kind of educate you on when you make these changes to anything, Always go back to the beginning, which is what I should have done. Uh, because I can honestly say, in fact, Takashi IM'd me after the match and he said, that trigger probably cost you 10 shots. And I think he's right. Now, I wouldn't have won the match. You know, who knows where I would have ended up because maybe I'd have made some other stupid mistake. But uh, I think 10 shots were legitimately lost by me not being used to that much travel in the trigger before the break. So I want to give a big shout out to my buddy Jeff, because uh, when I got home from the match, which was a, a 22 uh, rimfire match, by the way, I was pretty frazzled and upset. I gave him a call. I said, Jeff, what's going on? You own this trigger. Jeff probably spent an hour on the phone with me. And really, what he did was walk me through the instructions. <laughs> he made me read these line for line. And then he gave me his take and how he tunes these triggers. So I want to say thanks again to my buddy, Jeff. Just a great guy. Always there. When I, when I need him on the phone or, or when I've called him. But I just want you to pay attention if you get these triggers, if you get a single stage or a two stage, please pay attention to the instructions. If you make any changes to this trigger, any changes, please make sure that you, you just, just make sure that the sear is set properly, the, uh, the, the pull weight is set properly, uh, or trigger force as they're calling it in here and that you have a good uh, trigger gauge. Now, I went ahead and got the Wheeler uh, electronic uh, uh, trigger weight gauge, and it works really well. Uh, everything is relative, guys. Everything is relative. It's funny Brandon said that up the range yesterday. It's, you can use these pull weight devices all you want to, right? For me, it's saying it's eight ounces. It may not be eight ounces. It may be a pound. It may be six ounces. The, th the thing is, make the weight something that you can get used to. And if you're moving on a prop, if you get into position and you, you, you slam this rifle on a, a barricade, let's say, that you don't have that sear set so, so precisely or so, so lightly that the trigger engages and you have a, uh, you know, uh, a, a discharge that you didn't want to have. 
okay? So just keep all that in, in mind. I know I'm kind of rambling here, but I think it's just really important. I'm not gonna go through how to set the trigger up because quite frankly, I'm just gonna be honest with you, I don't want that liability uh, that I'm telling you something. I am not a gunsmith, but I've set it the way that I know how to set it. And if you read the instructions, uh, it will tell you that once you set this thing to where the to where you you run the bolt and the trigger releases automatically, that's not good. Right? You've got the sear set to light. You want to increase the sear. Uh, the other thing you're going to want to do is once you set it and you've got it set to where you run the bolt and, and you're going to run the bolt very hard, very hard. See how hard I'm running this thing? I'm really forcing it. And you do not want that trigger to engage until you pull the trigger. The other thing you're going to do is you're going to run it. Then you're going to that's not going to hurt the, hurt the scope, right? If, if this zero compromise gets out of whack because I'm doing this, then I've got bigger problems and so does zero compromise. So don't worry about that. And I'm not slamming it down. I'm just saying this would imitate being on a prop or something like that, right? Maybe I'm doing this. Just make sure that that trigger does not engage and you should be fine. So there you have it. A real quick one. Uh, thanks for hanging in there with me because I think this is a really, really important uh, thing that happened to me. I learned from it and I always love to pass that on to you all. So Bix and Andy Trigger, love it. Uh, love this wide gator grip shoe. Uh, you could do this all yourself. You could put it in yourself. If you have someone like a Brandon uh, or a buddy like a Jeff who can walk you through it, that would be even better but the instructions are fairly clear. You just have to follow them word for word. Well, there you go. I want to thank you all for watching. And again, until next time, shoot straight.